Marooned, shipwrecked, a family of castaways. At times, the island felt like a paradise and that the dear Lord was watching over us. Other times, that he had forsaken us and that we would never be rescued or returned home. And now the island and all that we endured feels almost like a dream. Did we really encounter the ghost of Raven Jones, cutthroat pirates? But I'm ahead of myself. Our adventures began in Boston in the year 1835 at the offices of my grandfather, Oscar Weiss. My father worked there for many years as a shipping clerk, as did many other men. The only difference being that he must have come to a point in his life where he no longer felt fulfilled. Like forest fires, great adventures often begin with tiny sparks, like the spark burning deep within my father's breast. He was in search of something more and suddenly made a decision. Enough was enough. The decision took everyone by surprise. No one more than my father himself. Excuse me, sir. Little did we realize how much my father's decision would affect our lives. It all began at a family meal around the Robinson table. No, no, no. You know perfectly well how I feel on that subject. My dear, we've never really discussed it. I will not jolt my way across America in a covered wagon. Kitty, it sounds exciting. Bridget, you may give the children their dessert in the kitchen. Do as your mother tells you, Christina. You too, Bruno. <laughs> And you, Ernst. I thought you said children, Mother. Ernst, off you go. David. My dear, I have had my head stuck in moldering ledger books for the past 16 years. But when Father retires, you will take over the company. Oh, yes, and become some old fossil snoring away in my armchair. We have a happy home. We have security. Why throw it all away on some wild dream? Because, Elizabeth, I believe dreams are important. <laughs> if we did join a wagon train, there'd be messes for me to write about. We could even be captured by Indians. Then you'd be dead. Not necessarily. Oh, yes. They'd scalp you. They'd take a knife. Christina, that's quite enough. But it's true. Hmm. I think I've suddenly gone off wagon trains. You would protect us, wouldn't you, Bruno? <laughs> Get the man down! Get the Don't man. worry, my dear. I sent David to attend to business at the docks. Just leave this to me. I really can't see him agreeing, Father. Don't worry, Elizabeth. I'm an excellent fisherman. I know exactly what bait to use. Now you just give my love to the children. Thank you. Later that evening, when my father returned home, he was unaware, as was my mother, that each of them had made their own secret plans, which were one and the same, and which were destined to change the course of the entire family's lives forever. Huh. Hello? Well, good evening, Elizabeth. Good evening, family. Good evening, Papa. Did you have a good day at the office, David? Interesting, my dear. Extremely interesting. Oh? How's the journal coming, Ernst? Well, I'm trying to write at least a page a day, Father. Splendid. Splendid. Whatever do you write about? Boston is so boring. Yes. I'm hardly likely to become a great novelist writing about Boston. Really? 
Mr. Samuel Pepys seemed to manage quite well in writing about everyday life in London. Oh, Mother, he did at least have the plague in the fire of London. Well, even though they might be invaluable for your writing, Ernst, I don't think we want either one of those here, do we? <laughs> do you know why Bridget is looking so glum? She has a face like a yard of pump water. Mama said she might soon have to look for another position. Oh? And cook as well. Really? Uh, really, girls, I will not have you indulging in idle gossip about the servants. Now, let us go into dinner. Did you not mention to me before that both Bridget and Cook may be leaving us soon? Oh, I will tell you after you have given me your news. News? What news? Oh, come now. I haven't been married to you for all these years without knowing something has happened. <sighs> Indeed it has. You know how unsettled I've been this past year. Hmm. Wagon trains. Yes, well, today, your father mentioned to me that soon we're going to be opening an office in Canton. And straight away, like a bolt from the blue, it came to me that I should apply for the position as manager. So instead of traveling west on a covered wagon, we'd be traveling east on board a ship. So I, I just dropped a hint, just the merest hint. And how did Father react? It was incredible. He straight away offered me the position as manager. No. Yes. And you accept it? Well, of course, but, but only on condition that it would be agreeable to you. Well, at least I'd be living in a house, not a covered wagon. Well, yes. Of course, it does mean that both Bridget and Cook will have to be let go. Someone will have to speak to them about it. But then you've already done that. Which means... Elizabeth, you've been in cahoots with your father. Elizabeth, tell me the truth. Uh -oh. Tell me. <laughs> Our adventure had begun. If only we had been aware of what actually lay in store for us. But first came the preparations and the packing. My mother seemed intent, as did my sisters, Joanna and Christina, on moving the contents of the entire household from Boston to Canton. Uh, it's no use, Mother. We're going to need at least another ten trunks. Yes. And we must find somewhere safe for our best dinner service. And the silver. That will need very careful packing. Mama, will we all have to speak Chinese? No, of course not. This is the most exciting thing that's ever happened to us. I intend to write a book about it. Are we all going to be in it? Of course. Then you must let me be rescued by a handsome prince. Rescued from what? Oh, I don't know. Joanna, this book is going to be about real life. Hmm, how dull. Now then, everyone, listen carefully. We have a sailing date. The schooner Fury, under the command of her master, Mr. Chisholm, will sail from Boston to Canton on the noon tide this coming Friday. Oh, wonderful! Father, I can't possibly be ready by Friday. Well, then, as they say, my dear, you'll miss the boat. <laughs> Step lively, lads. Passengers coming aboard. It's rather small, Mother. Oh, Monsters, my dear. The ship has sailed the go. seven seas, mainly under her master there, Carry On Chisholm. Carry On? <laughs> Carries on full sail, even in the worst of storms. And hasn't lost a ship yet, I'm told. Uh -huh. David, you got your wish for an adventure? Yes, sir. I'm looking forward to the challenge. I'm relying on you to take good care of my daughter, my grandchildren. It's on your shoulders now. They're broad enough, I trust. Safe journey. Thank you, sir. It's time to get on board, darling. Goodbye, my dear. There, the car's off, Mr. Blake.
And as we set sail, few could ever have foreseen how some of the passengers and crew were destined to play such an important part in our lives. Here you are, sir. Oh, thank you. What's your name? Billy, sir. The cabin boy. Anything you want, Billy will get it for you. Well, Billy, this is for you. Thank you. Right. Run along. Well, my dear, after you. Oh. We'll soon have all this properly stored away. Quite cozy, really. Oh. It's uh, rather cramped, but uh, I suppose one must make allowances. Now, we better go and have a look at the children's cabins. I, I do hope they're close by. The children's cabin? Mm. Elizabeth, this cabin is for all of us. Put your backs into it. That's it. Hold fast. Joanna, that man has a hook for a hand. Well, that's not unusual, Christina. Plenty of sailors have a hook if they've lost a hand. I wonder what it's like. Oh, Christina, stop it. Supposing the poor man saw you. So what was you before this, Ben? Ladies' maid or something? <laughs> Ladies' maid. <laughs> Shop assistant. Wanted to run away for a bit of adventure, I suppose. Something like that. You'll get that all right. Won't he, sir? Aye. My young brother might be soft in the head, but he's got hands like iron. You know how we're going to get yours like that, Ben? No. Pickle him. Pickle them in vinegar. We'll soon have you ship shape in Bristol fashion, ain't that right, sir? Aye, you see you're right. Just like he done for me. Yes, well, all right. Thank you, Mr. Parsons. Ain't no mister with it. Just Parsons. <laughs> the beautiful Emily Chan intrigues us all. She certainly wants nothing to do with the Robinson family before she dines alone. Her only companion is her governess, a Miss Brown. I have secretly nicknamed Miss Chan the Ice Maiden. Boy. Me, ma'am? Yes, you. Fetch me a chair. A chair? A chair, something to sit on. Aye, aye, ma'am. Bring me a book from my cabin, Brown. And be quick about it. I don't believe it. You, haberdashery. It's perfectly true, miss. Pins, needles, cartons. And ribbons? Well, I didn't get to do any serving, just fetching carrying mainly. Joanna. Excuse me. Joanna, I really don't think you ought to talk to the sailors. Well, we were just... Why don't you make friends with that Emily Chen? She certainly seems to be a well-brought-up young lady. Not brought up, Mama. Stuck up. Probably just shy. I'm sure she really wants to be friends. <laughs> I've told you before about talking to the passengers. Oh, she was talking to me, Mr. Blake. That young lady just happens to be the granddaughter of Mr. Oscar Weiss, the man what owns this entire shipping company. I see you even near the likes of her again, and you feel a rope across your back. Now get below. Miss Chen. My mother was just remarking that we haven't seen much of you on this voyage so far. No, that has been my choice. Well, I do hope you enjoy your solitude. Who's a lucky boy? You're not supposed to be doing this, are you? Well, what the cook was giving him wouldn't have been a mouse. 
Bruno's lucky to have a friend like you. You couldn't see him starve now, could I? My brother tells me that you've been talking to him about pirate ships. Don't go worrying your head about that, miss. Are you saying there aren't any? Perhaps one or two. Nate, where's that cabin, boy? Look, we shouldn't be down here. You mean you could get in trouble? We both could. Big trouble. <laughs> so, the Robinson family is closely related to the owner of this vessel. Well done, Ben. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I smell rich pickings here, Seth. <laughs> there are only two types in this world. There's them, and there's us. We're at the bottom of the pile, and they're at the top, and that's the way of it. That's right. They got what the likes of you and me ain't never gonna have, so we can. We take it. Pickens? Bit like charity, really. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? No. It just still sounds like thieving. A couple years more. Being trod on, feeling the lash, and having an empty belly, you'll feel different. Right, sir? Right, brother. We are 78 days out of Boston. And having rounded the Cape of Good Hope, we are crossing the Indian Ocean and rapidly approaching an area notorious for pirates. Hmm. Could be a pirate ship, Mr. Blake. Just take no chances. Cram on full canvas. Glass is dropped, sir. We could be in for a heavy blow. Excellent, Mr. Blake, excellent. But, sir, damn it, man. I intend to outrun that ship, so I'll thank you to obey my orders. Elizabeth, do you know where I put that Chinese primer that I packed when we left Boston? Oh, there it is, right on top. Must you do that now, David? Well, of course, my dear. We're going to China. I have to learn something of the language, don't I? Elizabeth, darling, won't you please let me have some of these trunks put away in the hold? Certainly not. They are far too valuable. Besides, they could so easily be stolen. I have no intention of reaching Canton, only to find that their food is not to our taste. So I have brought along supplies of our own. Father, it's quite possible we'll be chased by a pirate vessel. How far off is this ship? On the horizon. Captain Chisholm intends to outrun it. Well, being Captain Chisholm, I'm sure he'll succeed. Them Robinsons got valuables in their cabin. I heard him talking about it. You say where, sir? Aye, in them trunks. Pickens! <laughs> Here we must join the children at the captain's table. Time for supper. I really don't think I could eat anything, David. Oh, it'll be all right soon enough. Put your back into it, you scurvy dogs! Key to their cabin, Seth. We go back now, and they're in. See what you can find. I'll be along as soon as I can. Will you stop smelling that thing? It's lavender. Our mother had lavender. Never mind about that now. Just listen to what I tell the pair. Not me. I'm not taking part in any robbery. Well, that's gratitude. 
After all I done for you, now you do nothing for me. So much as blabs a word, you'll be feeding fishes. Sir! 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 If we don't take some canvas off her right away, we're gonna broach! Mr. Blake, I'll thank you to keep a set of those sails as they are. Now get back to your post. Yes, sir! Do you always talk to your officers like that, sir? Ma'am, I'll thank you not to interfere in matters that do not concern you. How dare you take that tone with my wife, sir? May I remind you that her father is the owner of this vessel and your employer? <gasps> no, no, don't you cry out. Just you keep quiet. And may I remind you, sir, that I am master of this vessel under God. Under God, sir, and no one else. Come to it. down upon your humble servants with pity and deliver us from the wrath of this storm. And we pray that you will grant the master of this ship and all of her crew the wisdom, ability, and fortitude to bring us all to safety. Amen. Amen. She's going! Abandon ship! Father, did you hear that? Abandon ship. All right. The important thing is to keep our heads and stay together. Point punch! Abandon ship! 